Hey guys, here we are again with another video about phrasal verbs. This is the third video that I am recording on the phrasal verbs. We have phrasal verbs that they are either two word verbs or three word verbs. And they are words that come before a particle and that particle can be a preposition. First, I want to answer to one key question. Why are phrasal verbs so important? First, phrasal verbs are used in daily communications. So when you use them, you sound natural. So this is the first reason that you need to learn them, master them in order to look natural. Second, they help you understand conversations better. Many structures in English, many expressions rely on phrasal verbs. And lastly, boosting your vocabulary. Mastering phrasal verbs makes you a versatile speaker, makes you a well-rounded speaker, so you can use variety of language aspects. Now, phrasal verbs are either transitive or intransitive. Transitive phrasal verbs are, are the ones that takes an object and intransitive phrasal verbs are the ones that don't take any object. Actually, transitive phrasal verbs don't need any object to have a complete meaning. They are complete by their own. For example, the trend is catching on. I taught all this phrasal verb grammar, all this chart in another video, which you can watch by clicking on the link above. Uh, the trend is catching on, means the trend is becoming popular. Catching on is a phrasal verb that doesn't need any object to be complete. And I'm going to record another video for intransitive phrasal verbs. But in this video, we want to learn separable and inseparable phrasal verbs. Separable are the ones that two, two parts of the verb can separate and the object can come between them. For example, turn the lights off, the object, the light, can come between the turn and off. With inseparable phrasal verbs, the object always comes after the phrasal verb. Look after the baby. Object comes after the phrasal verb. Not look the baby after. The baby is the object and we cannot put the object between the verb and the particle. I look after my young, younger siblings when my parents are away. I look after phrasal verb, then the object follows. Separable phrasal verbs are phrasal verbs in which they need an object to be complete. They are transitive, but the object cannot come between the verb and the particle. The object always follow the whole phrasal verb. For example, look after the baby. The baby is the object here and look after is our phrasal verb. We cannot say look the baby after. We cannot separate the two parts of our phrasal verb. Now, we are here to learn seven inseparable phrasal verbs. Are you ready? Let's kick off our video. The first one, pick on, pick on, pick on. Pick on means to criticize someone in a way that you bother them, even sometimes harass them, bully them. Criticizing people in a bad way that is not pleasant. So it can be the synonym to bully people, harass people by criticizing them. Sometimes it may be teasing them. So Criticizing people in a negative way, in a bossy way sometimes. And we can say to pick on someone, when you criticize someone as if that you're bullying them, harassing them, you're picking on them. Pick on minor mistakes to criticize people's mistakes. We can say pick on minor mistakes and pick on a flaw. Pick on a flaw, pick on a defect. Examples. The boys at a school always pick on him. It means they bully him. So here, pick on is the exact synonym to bully. And pick on is the phrasal verb 
and him is the object. She didn't appreciate how her classmates constantly picked on her for the small mistakes. So we're talking about a girl who was picked on, who kept being picked on because of making small mistakes. Now, look at these pictures. Look at these pictures. This is our quiz box. See? Quiz box. We just read a sentence about a girl being picked on because of making minor mistakes. Which one of these photos match correspond to this sentence? Look. And this picture. Yeah, we're talking about a girl who is afraid, who is embarrassed because uh, other people in the class, they are picking on her, they are bullying her, they are harassing her. So this picture matches the word pick on. And we have other pictures that I'm sure you're clever enough to guess which word they correspond to. The manager was accused of picking on the junior staff, especially when allocating difficult tasks, when making harsh remarks. Sometimes some parents are so strict on their children that they constantly pick on their children. Now we have a manager who is so strict, who is so harsh, so who is so tough with the employees that he constantly pick on the employees. Okay, he allocates, he allocates difficult tasks. He makes harsh remarks. So these are two examples of bossy behavior. Two examples of picking on people. Okay, so this was our first word. Second, run out of, run out of. Run out of means finish something, be out of something, deplete, exhaust, use up, use all of something so you don't have any of that more. For example, run out of time means when you don't have time, you say I'm out of time, I am running out of time or running out of supplies means your supplies are depleting, they are reaching to its end, run out of patience. When you don't have enough patience, when you're tired of waiting for something, you say, I'm running out of patience. And running out of ideas. You're, you're maybe exhausted, your brain is exhausted, you're tired, so you cannot think of more ideas, you say, I'm out of ideas. I'm running out of ideas. And here are the examples. We ran out of milk this morning. It means now maybe we don't have any milk now. The office ran out of printer paper in the middle of an important presentation. There were a presentation. Office needed no paper, but they didn't have enough printer paper it's because they used up of the printed papers so now they are out of printer paper they run out of printer paper look at these pictures in the quiz box which picture correspond to the sentence that we just read running out of printer paper that is the correct answer here people uh, are running out of are they vampire or something? Are they monsters? Their eyes... <laughs> okay, don't look at their eyes. They run out of papers. Next. The chef ran out of essential ingredients during the dinner rush, causing delays in the kitchen. Ran out of essential ingredients. Can we find the object here? Run out of is our inseparable phrasal verb. And after that, we have the object, the object here. 
essential ingredients. And there was a uh, there was a rush. The chef is running out of ingredients. Three pictures answered so far. Next, touch on. Touch on. Touch on. To mention something, to mention a subject, to mention an issue. Touch on means to mention, to refer to, to discuss something briefly, to talk about something briefly, allude to. And it's always used with topics, issues, key points, tips, and also we can touch on the importance of something. So when we want to talk about something, explain something briefly, we touch on that. So it's mostly used when you're talking about something. For example, he touched on the topic. So the topic here is the object during his speech. You see, the context is a speech and the speaker is touching on some issues. He touched on the topic during, oh, uh, it's repeated. The professor touched on several theories of cognitive development in the lecture. Let's go and find that professor among the pictures. Here we go. Do you see it? Here's the professor who is touching on various theories. Touch on. Word number four. Go over. Go over. Go over. When you go over something, you read it from, for example, going over examination, going over a book, a note. When you go over a note, you read that note from beginning to end. So it means review. Also, you can go over details so that you read all the details from beginning to end. Examine, inspect, scrutinize. Let's go over the homework before we submit it. Yes, review your homework because before you submit it, so it won't have any flaws, mistakes. The teacher decided to go over the chapter once more before the exam to ensure everyone understood. As a teacher, it is important to go over the details, the lesson one more time in order that you make sure that I make sure that my students are ready for the exam. The board of directors meticulously bent over every aspect of the proposal to identify any potential risks. So before accepting a proposal, you need to go over it in business context because there are some risks that you need to be aware of to, to avoid. So go over any application in a proposal before taking any action. So go over means review, examine. Go over details, go over notes, go over the contract in business context, and go over a proposal. These are some collocations used with go over. Next. Wait, we have a picture for the last word. Going over proposal in business context. Can you find that in the pictures? Three, two, one, and zoom in. Uh, a board of directors. Here, they are trying to going over all the proposals to find uh, potential risks. So I'm going to write here, go over. Now it's time to go to move on to the next word. Bear in mind, I have another video talking about separable phrasal verbs, which is this video, and you can watch this by clicking on the link above. Hang around, hang around, hang around. When you spend your time with your friends without any purpose, walking, wandering around in the city, that kind of activity is called hanging around. And it's inseparable, for example, hang around the corner, hang around a place, hang around with friends, hang around waiting for something. These are some kind of collocations that you may see with hang around. 
the synonyms are linger, stay around, wait around. For example, we hung around the park after school, hang around somewhere, stay around somewhere, be around somewhere in order to have fun aimlessly without any purpose. They tend to hang around the cafe until their friends arrive. So they stayed in the cafe without any purpose, just spending their time freely until their friends arrived. And the journalists were hanging around the courtroom. Oh, I, we have a picture for this. The journalists were hanging around the courtroom. Ah, uh, the place, courtroom, which is our object, the courtroom, the place that we need to find that in those pictures, hoping to catch a glimpse of the high-profile defendant. The profile, the defendant, which was famous in the media. Okay, so the picture that matches... Oh, I have two pictures for that. This and this. I need to delete one of, one of these. And here we are. All journalists trying to catch a glimpse of the high profile defendant, this young lady. I don't know if she's young or old, I'm not sure about that. But she's high profile, it means the person who's famous, she has a fame on maybe social media, on TV. And the answer for this picture is hang around. Next. Leave up to, leave up to, leave up to. When there are some standards that you want to reach, there are some expectations you want to reach, some great criteria either set by yourself or other people that you want to reach, you are living up to these expectations. You are trying to meet these expectations, these criteria, these touchstones, these objectives. So it is a synonym to meet expectations, to fulfill expectations, goals, standards, touchstones, to satisfy people's expectations and to measure up. So we can live up to expectations. Some children try to live up to their parents' expectations, live up to a promise, maybe a promise that we have made and live up to the hype. Live up to the, to the hype is not something common. It means trying to meet expectations, setting by the excitement around in your environment. So there is an atmosphere, uh, an exciting atmosphere around you. And uh, in that situation, you're carried on. So there is a hype that you want to live up to. So it's not a common expression. Sentences. He lived up to his parents' expectation. It's what many children do. They try to live up to their parents' expectation. Uh, the movie did not live up to the hype that surrounded its release. So when the movie was released, uh, there was an exciting atmosphere that, wow, this movie is good, it must be great, let's watch it. And then it disappointed everybody because it didn't live up to the hype that surrounded its release. We have a photo for that, don't we? Yes, 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 just can you find it? We have three pictures remaining. And yes, there is this one. Just look at the picture. Everyone is bored. Everyone is disappointed with the movie. So it didn't meet the hype. It didn't it didn't live up to the hype that existed during its release. Leave up to there we go. And the last vocabulary. Look after, easily take care of someone or something. Look after, watch over, attend to. Synonyms are look after someone's needs, look after the house, look after a child, look after one's health. It's easy. I need to look after my little brother. I need to attend to my little brother. She has been looking after her grandmother since she fell ill and the last one it's easy the nurse was assigned to look after the patient we have a picture for this so pay attention to the sentence the nurse was assigned to look after the patient 
ensuring that every medical protocol was followed meticulously. Okay, a nurse looking after a patient. Is it difficult? No, it's obviously this. There are two photos remaining, aren't they? I want you to write sentences for these two pictures. Picture number one, write a sentence for it. I want you to write some quotes, some statements, some sentences. I want you to write sentences for these pictures. For picture number one, yeah. And picture number two. Use your creativity. What can I say about these two pictures? And then we are going to read a story, a short text, in which we can review all the phrasal verbs that we have learned in this video. An afternoon with a friend. Last week, I decided to hang around, stay around, wait around the library for a while to finish my assignment. As I started to go over my notes, examine, review my notes, I realized that I had run out of time. I was out of time to complete the project. Later, I met up with my friend who has always had a hard time living up to his family's expectations, meeting their standards, meeting their expectations. He mentioned that he had been picking up extra shifts, of course. It's not picking on, so I need to remove its color, correct it. Picking up extra shifts, pick up extra shifts. This is a separable phrasal verb. Picking up extra shifts to help look after his younger siblings, take care of, watch over. He touched on, talked briefly about various subjects including how unfair it feels when people pick on others harass bully criticize others we had planned to grab coffee but the cafe had already run out of supplies the coffee was out of supplies didn't have any more supplies so we had to go somewhere else this was a text to review all the phrasal verbs that we have landed on this video and these videos are going to continue so don't forget to subscribe to be the first person to know about my next videos picture one picture two make two sentences now